It was horse, it was lamb, it was beef, and they married each other. <laughs> Mixed in with oil and sweet veggies. Dude, what a dish. The king. Yeah, it's the king. Oh. That's why it's Mmm. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Today I'm taking you to the Blov Center to eat the king of the national dishes, Blov. Blov is like the Uzbekistan biryani. Basically it's rice, you got some beef, you have egg, there's some pepper as well, some nice raisins. I mean, it looks amazing. I haven't tried it yet. And this is the Plov Center. It's open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And this is where you can eat the best Plov in Uzbekistan. They say it's the best place in all of Uzbekistan to eat Plov. They make it daily. They have like seven, eight different huge pans where they're making the Plov. Let's go inside and eat. And after we eat, we're gonna go explore some more of Tashkent. Follow me. Can you see this? Yeah. Look how big this is. It's huge. One of the biggest pans I've ever seen in my life. It is ginormous. It's, they're actually running out of the globe in this one. It used to be like filled up completely. Right now it's a small section. You basically go over there, you order, you get some of the rice. Then he asks you what you want. If you want some beef, you want some egg. We're going all out. We're going to try everything and we're going to eat the horse sausage. I haven't tried the horse sausage. They say it's freaking delicious. Oh man, I'm so excited. This is awesome. So the way it works here at the Blow Center is there's like seven different vendors here selling Blow, right? So you can either order it directly from a vendor, which we're gonna do right now, or you can go inside and order it from a waitress. The only difference is the waitress takes a little longer because obviously she's just taking many orders. So it might take like five minutes inside. Here it's gonna take like two minutes. They're gonna serve us right now. He's saying it's gonna cost me like 25,000 some, so something like five, three dollars. Three dollars exactly. So three dollars exactly for one giant plate with lamb, beef, the plov with the rice, and some horse sausage. Yeah. Oh my god. I cannot wait, man. It's really cheap, yeah. It's super yeah. cheap. Yeah. And it's really like, it's, you know, coming here, the experience is like actually seeing them do it. Like mixing all the oil with the rice, putting all the, the you know, the plov onto the plate, and cutting all the meats. I mean, it really is just a super sick experience here. Yeah, it's some type of attraction actually. Yeah, for yeah. me this is the attraction. <laughs> and for even me also, because it looks really beautiful and unusual when the chief mixed it up like I don't know, a huge portion of rice and he mixed, mixed with oil. It's really beautiful to see. Yeah, the, the, the attraction here is the experience of watching it. The food is second, but the food's gonna be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna order one, some good big plate of clove with some good big portion of meat and kazoo. <laughs> We can buy some salads, which are mainly uh, eaten with this with this plot, and you can uh, have some natural juices made from uh, fresh fruits and lime. So yeah, so it's just like fresh fruit juice and also some different salads. And the way it works, it's self-service right here. So I can come here, get some bread, get some salad, get some juice. Or when you sit down, you can ask the waitress. This is, there's an extra like service charge. So if you want to do it our way, do it. If not, pay, sit down and relax. So let's get an extra salad, maybe a juice and a bread. So there's two levels. You can either sit downstairs with, you know, a thousand tables, or you can sit upstairs and get a view. I want the view. Oh yeah, where would you like to sit? Right here, perfect. And here we go, the king of the national dishes in Uzbekistan, Blov. I didn't know this, but it's actually a mix of lamb and beef. You have some chickpeas, got some raisins, we have like some quail eggs right here. Really nice, like white and yellow rice. Then we have the horse sausage. Then next to us we have you know, the national salad, which is basically like a tomato salad with a cucumber, onions. That's basically it. It's, it looks very Greek without cheese, without the feta cheese. Maybe like a shovska salad in Bulgaria, but no cheese. Then over here we have the other salad, which is basically like pickles and cabbage. And this cabbage has like some red like spices, right? I don't know exactly what that is. We'll try them both. But right now, I gotta dive in here first. Just gonna get a big bite. Mm. 
Mm. I love it. The dish is a little sweet because it has yellow carrot, which is sweeter, and the raisins. Oh man. Mmm. I've had a dish like this before in South America where it's like a mix, right? With different like vegetables inside the rice, but never with lamb and beef. So lamb and beef time. Oh yeah. This is one of the tastiest rice dishes I've had. Like the biryani down in India is amazing, but it's so different. The sweetness, the oil throughout, the nice lamb and beef mixed in. Two, two different meats it really gives you a contrast in flavors. It's completely different mm -hmm. from biryani. No, different world. Mm, I love the veg in here. Having that in the sweet veg too, it's not just like veg. So I'm gonna break up the horse sauce a little bit. Make this like this. I'm gonna try it alone first, right? Yeah. Very gamey. And a little very, bit salty, right? A little salty. Very like, like it's so tender and so like, so lean. It's not, it's not fatty at all. It's very lean. I'm gonna mix it now. Okay, that was like a, such a crazy combination. It was horse, it was lamb, it was beef, and they married each other. <laughs> Mixed in with oil and sweet veggies. Dude, what a dish, the king. Yeah, it's the king. Oh. That's why it's the king. Mmm. There's also some peppercorn throughout. Oh, wow. And I like this, this is really nice. This is almost like a, like a minty, fruity drink. The one thing I didn't try yet was the quail egg. So I'm gonna cut the quail egg in half. Huh? No, I really can't, right? The whole thing? Mm. Woo! That was so different. I think that needs a little bit of salt. <laughs> what a masterpiece of a dish, man. What a great dish. Now you guys know, when you come to Tashkent, you have to come to the Plov Center. The Plov Center, you can't miss it. Huge center. It's basically a huge restaurant. Seven or eight different guys outside making the Plov. You just order outside or come inside, sit down, order whatever you want, which is obviously just Plov. You can just, you ask for you know the lamb and beef and how many horse, uh, horse sausages you want. So you can just keep adding more. Get some more salads, right? We're gonna try salads now. And get a drink, there's so many different food drinks. Super natural, this is the country of fruit. So my boy is telling me is to get the cucumber, right? That's cucumber? Yeah, that's a cucumber. That's a tiny cucumber. Yeah, it's really tiny. And then get some of the cabbage. Yeah, I've never seen that cucumber. It looks more like a pickle. And then get out here, mix it in, right? Yeah. Mix it a little bit. That, that must be pickled cucumber because it tastes very pickly, right? Cucumber is really fresh, very crunchy and it gives it a nice contrast to the oily rice. Wow, very nice. It, it basically reminded me like of a cabbage salad, very light on the sauce, like it's not like a, like a red chili or anything. Really good. So same thing with the next salad. Just get a little bit of it, put it in like that, mix it in, and saying get some of the juices, some of that red juice coming out. Nice tomato juice, okay? So cucumber, tomato, onion, mix it with the plov. Dude, super sweet, juicy tomato. Wow, so fresh, man. I've never been to a country where it's this farm to table. Like, wow, what a delicious tomato. Dude, that's probably one of the best tomato of my life. Yeah, because we got actually rice. Right. Uh, Uzbek tomatoes are widely spread around the world. Oh yeah? Yeah, around the world. Even in the United States, in Europe. But eating it here is so different. Yeah. Because you're eating it from the source. Zero brother, no, no, no. <laughs> the feeder. Okay, let me. Oh, mm. good, right? Yeah, it's familiar for me, but even despite that, I really love this food. That's why we call it king of dishes. So we ate the king of dishes. 
so freaking good. Wow, I can't even tell you, I can't put it into words, but you have to come here to Tashkent and try it. The yeah. blow. Oh Especially my god. Especially at the center of the blow. Yeah, so don't try anywhere else. Huge pan. Come here to the blow center, center of blow. Very easy to find, P L O V center. <laughs> That's fine. That's All right, so now we're, we're we going to Independence. Uh, yeah, we're going to check Independence Square right now. Okay. It's, uh, mm, it's just located at the center of the Tashkent. Okay. And it represents the independence of uh, our country. There we got some monument there. It's a beautiful place. Let's, Let's go. Check it. Okay. All right, so before we head to the Independence Square, we're going to stop first at the Oloi Bazaar which is another one of the oldest bazaars here, but it was renovated about four years ago. It's really, really nice, and they sell basically the same things as the other bazaar I went to earlier today, which is fruits, vegetables, and meats. But so we have to check it out. It's like a must visit. It's the second most visited bazaar in all of Tashkent. And then after that, we're gonna make our way to the Independent Square. So first we're going here, literally we're here. Let's park. So here we go, entering Oloi, Oloi Bazaar. How do you say it? Olo Bazori? Oh, oh, no, 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 look. Uh, 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 Oloi Bazar. Oloi Bazar. Yeah, it's, I okay. was going to say it. And it's open from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Here we go, let's enter. Yeah. Right now we are passing through the gold shops and one of the interesting facts is that it's the center of gold in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent, and kilograms of gold are sold every day here. Wow. So basically it's like the main gold center in yeah. Uzbekistan, right here. Right here. These are all gold shops. Yeah. Wow. Everywhere, gold shops. All right, so basically we walk through, I don't know what that is, maybe like 100 yards, less than a football field, and that's it. I mean, there's like 20 shops in there of gold, really nice. That's where like all the rich people are right now. <laughs> yeah. so they're all spending money on gold. Yeah. And then out here we have the national souvenirs. Look at this, look at this. You have to see this, the old man. I love this guy, by the way. I want to get one of him, but like the mask, the wooden mask, I saw a few. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't have Look at that, wow. Pretty nice, some of back clothing. And, and then all the pottery, right? Yeah, there's some little shop of souvenirs here. Yeah, so there's a national souvenir shop down here. Oh, look how beautiful it is, actually. I know, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then over there is the bazaar, right? Yeah. All right. Modern looking. Let's go. Yup, super, super modern. What a beautiful building. Dude, this place is sick. I love it. Yeah. It's like 30 foot, 40 foot ceilings. Each section is different. Over here we have fruits. There are some more fruits. Over there we have dry fruits and nuts. Across from us we have some spices over there. And so many. It's a really nice though. It feels cleaner. Yeah, it feels clean and actually it's considered as the nicest bazaar. Oh, the nicest? Yeah, the nicest bazaar, yeah. Because of it's like a mm, more modern looking. And um, actually a lot of tourists are visiting this bazaar. And it's more comfortable to bazaar here, to buy goods, that's yeah. why. Yeah, the other one we went to is more like traditional. It feels like it could be 100, 200 years old. Yeah. This one, you can see that this is new. Yeah, modern. All right, so this guy's let me try a fig. Oh my God. Oh. Mm, more figs. Mm. I love figs, man. Yeah, that's called Uzbek hospitality, actually. Like when you walk and uh, went through, everyone will try to <laughs> give you food or something else. All right, so this kind lady is letting me try some some strawberries. Whoa, you give me all of them? No, let me let me try one. I mean, it tastes like strawberries I had in Miami. Very really nice, juicy, but very small compared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the season. Of yeah, it's not season. Yeah, that's sort right. of dried out. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. As, ca as compared to other bazaars, where, for example, Chorsu, you can there in Chorsu you can find uh, fruits and vegetables from the lowest quality and the highest quality. I mean the wide range. But the reason why the Oloi Bazaar, current bazaar, is called the nicest one, it's only sold and only the highest quality products are sold here in this bazaar. Vegetables. So highest quality and nicest looking. Yeah, highest quality and nicest looking. If you want the freshest, highest quality. Do you want me to try something here? Of course. Everyone will try. Everybody wants to try. Yeah. I'm gonna try this, dude. I love this. Is okay? Yeah, Ninety percent of so the things that are produced in Uzbekistan. Oh yeah. Made in Uzbekistan. Yeah, actually. So we are trying which tea? Green tea? So it's not tea. It's more like herbs. Yeah, herbs. Mix of herbs and everything else. Oh wow. It's, it tastes medicinal. Yeah, it's it, you, could, you could feel it's really it. Good. Yeah, almost every Uzbek. 
cities that are. Whoa, dude, this is giving me energy like off the spot. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm recommending you to buy it. Oh, wow. And right here we have some of the freshest tomatoes on the planet. Uzbekistan tomatoes. <laughs> Look at them, the color. Can I grab? Can I grab one? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you see the color? It's so different. It's it's like a. It's 100% organic. Yeah, it's 100% organic, but it's not like red like tomatoes I get in America. It's a little less red, like like a little shinier, right? A little cloudy too. Oh my god! I, I, tell about I, can, I can like take a bite. No, no, no. <laughs> How you doing? Everything good? So. Try tea? Yeah. All right, some more tea. Mountain tea? Yeah, mountain tea. Oh, it's good, but it's hot. It's hot. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right there. Samarkand? Samarkand chai. Mm. Mount, Samarkand mountain tea. Oh, it's delicious, man. It's it's very light. It tastes like green tea, but a lot of herbs. Too good, man. Too good. Yeah, of course. One of the interesting things in the bazaar is that you can find also that a lot of places when you can find the greens I mean and the, also the freshest one also the delicious one in the world in Tyrol and the most organic one also wow the aroma here is ridiculous oh so nice I and mean, we got like what is it cilantro we got some lettuce uh, I don't know all the different herbs here but we got the, some basil they, they look good yeah some basil as well uh, some onion, right? Some Chili. other onion. And one of the unusual things in Uzbek bazaars, it's a, a little white round things, which are considered like a cheese, Uzbek cheese. And it's best to have it with a beer. With a beer? Yeah, with a, it's like a beer stack. It's considered here, it's a beer stack. It's called kurt. Look. In Uzbek, it's called kurt. It's salty ones made with a milk, from milk and tastes like a cheese. So basically this is like a little milk ball. Yeah. A milk yeah. ball, right? Wow. Can I try one? Can I buy one? Or of try course. It? Just, just, just try it? I put it in mama, yeah. So we gotta smell it? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it tastes like like super, super uh, fresh cheese. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Un yeah. Unpasteurized. Yeah. Huh? Little bite. No, 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 little bite. Just for the first try. <laughs> That's my favorite. Wow. Thing, actually. It's strong. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. That's strong? Yeah. Very strong. Mm. Mm. What is this? Goat cheese? Is no, goat? no. It's not the goat cheese. Cow? Cow cheese, yeah. It's 100% organic. It's yeah. I mean, it's like I'm drinking the milk from the cow. No, no. <laughs> 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 Alright, we're done with the bazaar. Now off to Independence Square. Oh, with it. Oh my God, it's so hot right now in Tashkent. It's like 100 degrees. <laughs> yeah. The car is on fire. <laughs> Open the windows. Give me some water. Let's go. You ready, my man? Yeah, I'm ready, man. It's too super hot. Man. All right, so we made it. Independence Square. And basically right over there, that's where the president's sitting. That's his house, right? Yeah. It's his house. And then that's the Independence Square right there? Yeah. It's about right there. 200 meters away. Perfect. Let's go. To get to Independence Square, we actually have to go through a metro stop. So if you guys don't know about the metro system here in Tashkent, every single station is like beautifully designed. Yeah. They all look gorgeous. I haven't been to any of them yet. But yeah, I mean, this is like, oh, but this one is nothing. No? The entry is up to the metro. Is oh, because the entrance yeah. is in there? Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Each, each station of metro is different from other, and a lot of uh, expensive materials are used in building that, like the most uh, beautiful marbles, uh, crystals, and lights, and that kind of things. And here we are, Independence Square. Wow, super sunny. Really windy right here. Why so windy? Because of the fountains and the park maybe. Is that what it is? I mean, I haven't felt this wind yet here in Tashkent. <laughs> Two huge fountains to the right and left. Over here we have, this looks like an aqueduct. Obviously it's not just a monument. In the back, we have another monument with a statue and the globe on top, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a monu monument of independence of Uzbekistan. Right now we're approaching to the monument of eternal flame and monument of mother. 
and beside that there is the records of uh, people who participated in World War II we can read about them there all of the records are saved there so in case you guys don't know history obviously this country and all the countries around it all the stands were part of the Soviet Union so mother Russia yeah, right yeah. so during World War II they all fought in that war and the biggest the most casualties in World War II were the Russians yeah the most that died yeah. right over here not all the Russians the, I mean yeah but Soviet Union Soviet, Soviet Union, Union yeah, yeah Soviet yeah. Union so over there we have all the names of everybody who yeah. passed from Uzbekistan right yeah from Uzbekistan and then over here we have Monument of Mother it's oh, so Monument of Mother okay yeah. then right here we have the Eternal Flame I've seen I've seen like one two I've seen like four Eternal Flames in my life Sarajevo uh, the one by JFK's uh, cemetery Arlington Cemetery and this one right next to the Eternal Flame we have this wall and it has all the names of every single soldier from Uzbekistan that fought with the Soviet Union in World War II you can see this is all the T's right basically everybody passed away between 1942 and 1945 really sad but obviously you have to see this you know to remember that war everybody was affected by that war my family came out of that without that war I wouldn't be alive so I tell you super sad time in history so most of you guys don't know this but both my grandparents fought in World War II my Hungarian grandfather he was a captain in the Hungarian army and he was in Moscow got shot four times they sent him back he met my grandmother when he was she was a nurse and then he made it out to Vienna and then eventually made it to Venezuela. My other grandfather was in the Italian army and he was a guy who would demine, he would demine, basically mines. He would take the mines out, get, get rid of them. And then after the war, he moved over to Argentina and then eventually to Venezuela. So, you know, everybody who has, is part of this world right now was affected. You know, obviously if either you're European, Russian, Japanese, I mean, American, we're all affected by World War II, so it's really good to visit sites like this to remember the people who passed and fought for us to be free. We're making our way back to the metro station. Before that, we're gonna pass right by the fountain again and check this out. The fountain is straight up, like super high, shooting up like 20 feet in the air. It's great place to get photos. Look at this. Whoa, this is awesome, man. Incredible. Wow, I feel like I'm inside the fountain right now. <laughs> awesome, bro. Yeah, awesome. Small part of, I don't know, the way we can get precious in that, that kind of hot water, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It actually feels very, really like cool right now. Yeah, yeah. It dropped like 10 or 20 degrees. <laughs> wow, yeah. it is amazing. So we just entered the metro station. It costs us 1,400 per person. So you're talking about like a dollar fifty each, a little less. And here we go. Metro station next to Independence Square. This is the fanciest metro station I've ever seen in my life. It was built by the Soviets. Yeah. So it looks like a Soviet ball. Like, you know, like a, like a gala, like how they have it. Like these huge columns, very beautiful. The chandeliers are like humongous, one, two, three, four, like 20, 20 different light bulbs in each one. We have these huge pillars you can see all made of marble very beautiful marble on the floor as well so each each station is like this but different yeah of course each station differs from each other uh, from another yeah but not like this like different colors oh, all blue okay. one green one yes like lots of red different red one yellow wow. one different ones yeah. this station is called independence station independence station yeah, yeah i love the top all the symmetry up there yeah it's also all different all cuts made by hand so, oh yeah yeah it's everything is made by hand we did it we saw the metro station i mean I'm, I don't, unfortunately i don't have time to go on the metro line and go to different stops because i have something to go to later but yeah i mean i think when you come here to tashkent you have to come and explore the metro system if you're staying anywhere along the metro system use it to get to other places it's really cheap to take a taxi so and look i mean for me luckily he has a car but <laughs> I suggest you take the metro system at least once or twice, go to a few different stations. If you're into photography, you have to do it. And yeah, what a great day we had. We started off at the Blob Center. Incredible, incredible food, my man. Yeah, wow. The king of dishes. The yeah. king of dishes. So good. Lamb, beef, oh, the and, horse sausage. And also about the people in the Olay Bazaar. Yeah, yeah, the bazaar, I mean the hospitality. Yeah, I great. actually like that bazaar better than the other one just because of people. Yes. People are way friendlier. Everybody yeah. was giving me food, giving me tea. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. And then we saw Independence Square, which basically we saw more the memorial area. We saw the little square, then we went to the memorial. 
We saw the eternal flames. We saw all the names on the wall of everybody who died during World War II. And then we came here to the Independence Square Metro Station. You have to visit. When you come to Tashkent, you have to do everything I did today. They are must-dos. You can, you know, fit it in like a five-hour span. You just gotta do it. Gotta go eat that food, see that bazaar, see the Independence Square and the Metro Station. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Peace.